Okay, good day everyone. This, today we are going to study the brief history of the Seventh-day Adventist Church and its early beginning on how this church become um, what we are now today. And so the Seventh-day Adventists have never viewed themselves as just another denomination. denomination. On the contrary, from their beginning, they understood the movement to fulfill the prophecy. As they have viewed it, the role has been to preach the unique message of the three angels' message as stated in Revelation chapter 14, verses 6 to 12, representing God's last appeal to a dying world before Christ's return to harvest the earth based on, on verses 14 to 20 of Revelation 14. So Seventh-day Adventists eventually concluded that they needed to preach the special message to every nation, kindred, and tongue, and people, according to verse 6 of Revelation um, 14, that belief coupled with a sense of nearness to the end of earthly time has impelled the Seventh-day Adventist church members into one of history's most energetic mission program so the growth or the beginning of the 70 adventist church can be traced back during the time of william miller modern 70 adventist finds it finds um its immediate roots in the second advent movement of the early 19th century while many preachers proclaim the soon coming of Christ in Europe and other parts of the world, they believe that is most significant impact in North America. So the preaching of, of the gospel about the second coming of Jesus Christ is actually made a significant impact in North America. And from Central to North America, Adventist beginning was, you know, pioneered by a Baptist layman named William Miller. So William Miller was born from or into a Christian home. However, Miller abandoned his religious conviction for decent in the first um, years of the 19th century. When we see decent is a skeptical belief that rejects Christianity with its miracles and supernatural revelation. They believe that the deistic or deism, or the deism belief, or deism is actually a belief that God is a distant God who does not actively participate in the earthly affairs of human beings. So deistic beliefs become popular in Europe and North America during the last half of the 18th century but the atrocities and the excesses of the French Revolution in 1790s led many to question the human reason as a sufficient basis for civilized um, living. It means that uh, theistic belief could not explain the existing uh, famine, killing, and violence uh, around the world during the French Revolution, and he concluded that theistic cannot suffice, uh, cannot suffice, um, or cannot satisfy their their search for the meaning uh, of life. And so, as a result, many of the theistic uh, believers um, abandoned theism and they returned to. Christianity again during the first two decades of the 19th century. So Miller Miller became skeptic until 1812. His mind was stimulated to study the Bible during the Second Great Awakening that revitalized the American churches. So because of the French Revolution, of because of the experience of the war and experience of violence, it aroused their interest again to go back to the Bible. And one of those individuals um, was William Miller and so he, William Miller started to study the Bible 
during the second advent uh second great awakening and he became so zealous to study the bible he studied the bible from genesis to revelation and he will not you know jump to the next chapter unless he can fully understand the meaning of of the particular chapter that he is reading and one of the tools that he used in his bible study was crude and concordance by way of comparing one text to another in order for him to understand the meaning of that specific texts or the specific uh, verse of the bible he studied the bible intensively from from 1816 to 1818 two years of intensive study and after that he discovered that jesus christ will come uh, according to him that jesus christ will will really come when he read um daniel 8 14 that up to, to, to 2300 days then the sanctuary he shall be cleansed he thought that the sanctuary being referred to by daniel was was the the earth or the world and so he believed that christ will come in 1843 based on his calculation but he also understood by his reading in revelation that christ will come in the beginning of 1000 years but his common belief or but he believed that christ will come at the end of of the 1000 years so there was that you know confusion in in his mind and so he extended his study again for another five five years so we can see that from 1816 to 1818 when he discovered that uh christ will come uh, in 1843 but he because there was that conflicting um ideas uh, well, when he read the Bible, especially in Revelation chapter 20, uh, Revelation chapter 20, that states that Christ will come at the beginning of a thousand years, but his belief at the time um, is contrary to what he read in Revelation chapter 20, because he believed that Christ will come at the end of uh, 1,000 years, but it was the common belief at the time by the Protestants in his time that Christ will come at the beginning of 1000 years and so where he get that conclusion that christ will come um in 1843 now um he studied and he encountered numbers 14 uh verse 34 and ezekiel 4 5 that states that um we call it the day uh day year um uh, principle because in the bible when it when we when, when it talks about um prophecy a day is actually a symbol of a year or a year day principle so when miller calculated the beginning of 2300 days prophecy he concluded that in 1843 jesus christ will come and so he was so thrilled of his discovery but after uh, searching for two years there was that contradictory uh, in his finding he remained or he studied again from 1818 to 1823 that is five years to intensively study the subject about the second coming of christ and after seven years of study he concluded that christ will really come in 1843 and his coming will commence the 1000 years and so he started to share his discoveries to his neighbors but only um few few uh, interested or got interested to listen to him so we can see from 1823 to 1837 32 uh, miller continued to study the bible he determined to warn the people of the impending doom and there was that impression uh, coming from god that uh, told him to go and tell the world for the danger for the danger he tried to avoid that conviction but he could not you know escape his conscience he made a covenant with god that if someone would invite him to talk about the second coming of christ he will go he will determine to go but you know when he made that commitment he made this statement all my burden was gone 
and I rejoice that I should not probably be thus upon, for I have never uh, such an invitation. He made a commitment that if someone will invite me, then I will go and preach about the second coming of Christ. So after a while, having that commitment, 30 minutes later, you know, he received, or there was a knock on, on the door. And when he opened, somebody asked him to talk about the second coming in the church. And he was so angry, realizing that, you know, there was that uh, invitation. He was so angry with God and he was so angry with himself. And he determined not to go. But he remember his, you know, his commitment that if somebody will uh, invite him, he will go. And so he went to a forest and there he wrestled with God because he was determined not to go. And he wrestled, that's what I've said, he wrestled with God for an hour. And after one hour of wrestling with God, he submitted, has he submitted to the call of God. And as a result of his ministry in the late uh, 1830s, many or several pastors were converted to his message of the imminent coming of Jesus Christ. So we can see that, you know, William Miller became a reluctant uh, prophets now because of this um, many people heard his message and one of of the preacher who you know uh, got interested of the message of William Miller was Joshua Himes in the year 1939 found Himes as the most Influent, influential pastor of Chardon Street Chapel in Boston. So in the state of um, uh, in, in Boston, there was that popular uh, pastor, uh, Joshua B. Himes. And he recognized as the leader in interchurch movement to bring about the earthly millennium through broad-based personal and social reform. So in November 9, 1839, however, Himes invited William Miller to hold series of meetings in his church, proclaiming about the second coming of Jesus Christ. So Miller's second Advent message transformed the energetic Himes and the foremost publicist of the message that Christ would return about 1843. And so he made lots of you know, tent meetings, uh, warning, giving warning to the people in Boston about the second coming of Christ. Now another, a development of, of the Seventh-day Adventists during the time of Charles Speech and the Babylon. So while the Millerite preaching that Christ would return about 1843 directly contradicted the general accepted Protestant teaching that Christ would come after the millennium. So there is that contradictory as what I've said a while ago that um, um, Miller believed that um, the beginning of millennium will be at the end, or the Christ will come at the end of the millennium, but in uh, we can find in Revelation chapter 20 that Christ will come at the beginning of the millennium. In fact, it's the beginning of the millennium when Christ will come. So many people will know, um, do not believe or are confused, and sometimes they are doubted because the popular teaching at the time that the second coming will will come or will will happen, the event will happen at the end of the millennium, after the millennium. So while most of the domination pulpits and church building had been open to Adventist preaching during the early 1840s, things began to change in 1843 when William Miller um, stressed that the beginning of of Christ coming or the millennium will be the beginning of Christ coming. So the Millerites came under progressively more ridicule and often had to decide between their Advent belief and their denomination. So there was now confusion and Millerites, when we say Millerites, people who believe that Christ will come, they're called Millerites regardless of their religious affiliation. So now uh, there is now a faction between Advent belief and other denomination. 
those choosing to retain their faith in the soon return of Christ increasingly found themselves disfellowshipped by their congregation. So those who did not adhere to the popular teaching that Christ will come at the end of the millennium, so they were removed from the fellowship of that denomination. So in other words, the year of the end approached confrontation, confrontation between theologists and the second advent flare up. So Charles Fitch, a popular Millerite minister of the Congregationalists denomination, preached the sermon on Revelation 4, 18 verse 14 that says, come out of her my people. And he identified, Fitch identified that the papacy as Babylon uh, that was also the common um, uh, interpretation of Protestants. But Fitch argued that Babylon is Antichrist and anyone who opposes the personal reign of Christ over this world is Antichrist. His position was called was all Catholics and Protestants who reject the teaching of the soon coming of Christ, they are called antichrist or babylon so there was that you know a faction going on between the advent movement and um advent believers in the other denomination so miller initially had resisted being too specific about the exact time of christ's return his message emphasized about the year 1843 however by january 1843 he had concluded based on 2,300 um, day prophecy of Daniel 14 and based on his discovery of the Jewish calendar that Christ would return sometime between March 21, 1843 and March 21, 1844. And so he made that statement, prepare to meet thy God, to prepare to meet thy God. However, uh, that was the headline headline in the Western Midland Cry on March 8, 1844. As the end of the third approach, however, Miller, year of the end of the world, passed without the return of Christ. Thus, the Millerite experienced the first disappointment because when Miller set March 21, 1844, that Christ will come, but it did not happen. So that was the first disappointment. Now, this, appoint, this disappointment, you know, led to the pioneers to dig deeper on, on the word of God. And it came out, the other movement, they called it the seven-month movement uh, and the true midnight cry. The seven-month movement means it is the seventh month of the Jewish calendar. And so the, when they started the... the uh, Jewish calendar, they found out that it's not March, but actually in another month. So Millerism found a new hope at the Exeter um, New Hampshire camp meeting in mid-August of 1844. That convocation, Miller at Minister, another minister is Samuel S. Snow, convincingly demonstrated through a variety of mathematical calculation that the fulfillment of 2,300 day prophecy of Daniel 8.14 would take place in the autumn of 1844. Through intensive study of the ceremonies of the Jewish calendar, Snow predicted that Daniel's prophecy about the cleansing of the sanctuary would beat its completion in the Jewish day of atonement, the 10th day of the seventh month of the Jewish calendar based in Leviticus chapter 23 verse 7. And so that seventh month will fall on the month of the seventh month of the Jewish calendar will fall to the Julian calendar in somewhere in the month of October. So Samuel S. Snow calculated based on Karaiti, which is the Jewish calendar, the day of atonement fell on October 22, 1844, not March 21, 1844. So in that, in that time when they were uh, congregating in Exeter, New Hampshire, they concluded that 
we have two months to prepare for the second coming of Christ. And so the audience were electrified and left and left the Exeter meeting with that burning desire to tell the urgent message to the world that behold, the bridegroom cometh and time issue short and let's get ready. So people who attended that, uh, you know, camp meeting were so, so inspired and so excited to warm the people of the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. However, uh, Himes and William Miller and other leading Adventist leaders hesitated, hesitated to fix their hopes on a definite day. But the message, you know, of 1844 that Christ will come spread like a wildfire. And, you know, Miller continued to study the Word of God, study the 2300 days a study history on october 6 1844 miller himes and other millerite leaders were convinced by the presentation of samuel snow that christ will really come in october on october 22 1844 so the leaders of the millerite movement put more effort in preparing the world for the coming of christ and some of them some of the uh, Millerite followers or believers left uh, their job, resigned from their job. Some never harvested their, their crops. And some, you know, closed their shops, their stores, and go and preach uh, the message, the urgent message that Christ will come in few days. However, when the time comes, October 22, Tens of thousands of believers lingered in expectation of the appearance of Jesus Christ in the clouds, while countless others waited in doubt, fearing that the Millerite might be correct. So there, um, before midnight of October uh, 22, 1844, there were uh, people who are excited that Christ will come. There were also in doubt and others also fear, there are three people, groups of people here, people who are excited of the coming of Jesus Christ, people, the Millerite people, uh, believers who waited with, in, in doubt, and the third category also do not believe the uh, uh, preaching of the gospel. They feared also that the Millerite might be correct, that Christ will come and they will not be saved. And they waited and waited, and when the midnight came, Jesus Christ did not appear. Thus, they were mocked by the scoffers and fearful that leaving the Millerite in a total array and disappointment. Their specific claim about the time and their unbounded confidence in October 22 date heightened their uh, disappointment. So the first disappointment was done or what happened in March 21, 1844, but the great disappointment happened in October 22, 1844. And you know, it seems that it's a great disappointment for the Millerite, but for the Seventh-day Adventist Church, it was actually a magnificent disappointment. Though it was Christ not come, in 1844 october 22 1844 but this group of people continues continued to study the bible and according to revelation chapter 10 verse 8 verses 8 to 10 it describes the event in the great disappointment that states the thought was like honey in the mouth but be known to them it would be there in the belly. So the Seventh Adventist Church would come out in the sitting cauldron and shapeless mass of this encouragement and confusion. However, no one can predict the development in 1844. And we will study the next uh, chapter on how the Seventh Adventist Church be able to develop their doctrinal beliefs.